Since 1988, a debate has taken hold across all nations, races, creeds, and religions. A debate that has been weighed in on by celebrity, royalty, and commoners alike. All over a very, very simple question. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? To which I respond, sod it, it's Christmas, do what you want. I know, I know, I know. The first one came out in July, but it's set on Christmas. But like, what even is a holiday tradition anyway? You can make up your own one. For crying out loud where I grew up in the UK, the quintessential Christmas flick is The Great Escape. Tell me what The Great Escape has got to do with Christmas, because I don't know. Like, I guess my point about this whole little rant here is, uh, because we can and because it's more Christmassy than The Great Escape, let's play um, Die Hard Trilogy on PlayStation 1. Die Hard Trilogy is an odd one for me. I had this as a wee lad growing up, but I vaguely remember only playing Die Hard 2's game for some reason. With that said, I guess we should start with the first adaptation, Die Hard. All of these titles are arcade-style high-point affairs themed on the three films, and this first one is a tower ascent at Ol Nakatomi Plaza, same as that first film, Die Hard, the quintessential quote-unquote bloke flick. It is of course the movie that cemented Bruce Willis as an action star and broke out the career of Alan Rickman. This thing is great, with some of the most memorable scenes, characters, and one-liners in the genre. The only difference this time around on PlayStation is that there's a lot less broken glass, meaning there's no barefooted adventures, but there is a lot more bad guys. The idea of each level is pretty straightforward. Find and free all the hostages, take out all the baddies, get weapons, explore, and after all that, run back to the elevators to defuse a bomb and go to the next stage. It's simple, fun, but effective, and honestly, more themed to the film than Die Hard Arcade was. The only bit that bothers me is the race back to get that bomb. Mess it up and you have to restart the stage. And of course, it costs a life. Oh yeah, since this is an arcade game, the rules are simple. Do as much as you can within the life limit, rack up a high score, and don't mess up too bad. It's mindless, fun, but solid. The controls can take a little getting used to. Uh, discovering the role helped me out a lot, and the level layouts can be a bit maze-like too. On multiple occasions, I was wondering about, trying to find the last baddie, hoping they were near the elevator out to make my life just a little bit easier. That said, at least McLean has his shoes on this time. You freaks. Speaking of McLean, he's the only character that I recognize from the film. Hans Gruber, Holly, Sergeant Powell, not to be seen. Instead, we have generic enemies 1 through 20, and sure, I, I get it, but a little more variety would have been nice. Also, when you get to the end, do you think you'd maybe, you know, that we'd get one of those digitized PS1 remakes of that iconic ending? No, you get this. Hmm. The pain in the ass. All the way up that tower for basically nothing. Maybe we'll be better awarded in Die Hard 2, Die Harder. And that's not the actual name of the film, but like, I always want to call it Die Hard 2, Die Harder, it's so American. Why does nobody argue if this film is a Christmas flick? It's even more Christmas themed than the first, with all the snow, decorations, presents that aren't presents. It's also got much weaker one-liners than the first one. Listen, uh, you're not pissing in somebody's pool, are you? <laughs> yeah, and I'm fresh out of chlorine. Yippee ki -yay, welcome to the party, now I have a machine gun. No, we get a pool cleaning gag. At least the rest of the film is good. Seriously, I quite like Die Harder, mostly because McLean is so damn exhausted the whole way through and just done with this whole terrorists on Christmas shtick. This man just wants to go home to his family, get some food, maybe have a little booze, but no, here he is going through absolute hell. Again, give this man a raise. 
Kind of like those service workers stuck at Dulles Airport dealing with people's crap in one of the busiest travel weeks of the year. Be kind out there, okay? So, we've got an airport setting, which, to me, would be a great location for a crawling shooter, and that's sort of what we get. It's actually a light gun game, with each level themed around scenes from the film. Something that's kind of weird, the airport in the film was actually a chunk of LAX, but the game is much, much closer to the real dollars. Ooh, Jack Thompson would have a field day with this one. You have an assortment of weapons, such as the expected pistol, a variety of automatic pieces, rockets, shotguns, so on and so forth. You know, like a real American Christmas. With the hostages this time, the goal isn't to grab and save them, but simply not to hit them, which, with how nutty this whole thing gets, is much easier said than done, since they just love to get in the way every bloody chance they get! At least the levels are varied, even if they are a bit short. Also, I can't help but notice there's some weird performance issues with this game. Like, uh, it's running at one frame rate for a while, then it gets oddly smooth for a bit. Disclosure, I am playing this on my back compatible PS3. Now, my understanding on a hardware side is that should be a non-issue. This is the one that has the PS2 daughter board and PlayStation chips in it and all that nonsense. From Googling around, what I could tell, the issue might be the game doesn't like running at a high resolution. So you know, it's just something to be aware of. It's not a deal breaker. Overall, this is easily the best game on the disc. It's fun, it's fluid, the weapons are satisfying, and you can do a run in a little under an hour, which for an arcade-esque light gun game seems about right. It's a shame I don't have a light gun for PS1, otherwise I'd have hooked this up to my CRT and had a whale of a time doing it. Oh, and before I forget, no, the ending isn't much better, but at least it has an actual final mission, with you shooting down helicopters around what I assume is Holly's plane. Nice one. This leaves us with one last game in the collection, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Also known as Die Hard 3, Die Harder, uh, uh. This is the film that seems to split opinion the most. Nearly everyone I know hates this one, but critically, it's absolutely adored. Myself, I think it's fine, but I'd rather watch the first two. It's clear that Samuel Jackson was the second choice for Zeus behind Lawrence Fishburne, but it works. Jeremy Irons as Hans Gruber's brother Simon Peter is naturally the best part of it, and also it's the first in the series not set at Christmas. But we're doing this now for the sake of completion, and also may I refer you to my earlier comments about The Great Escape. You want to watch Spider-Man on Thanksgiving? Do what you want. Have your own fun. Make your own traditions. It's mine. You're an adult now. You can do what you want, as long as it's not illegal. Even then, only if you're caught. I am not a lawyer. <clears throat> Sorry, back on the point. The game is set around the main crux of the film, running around NYC, disarming various explosives set up by Simon. It's got a crazy taxi vibe, but that's about all it has going for it. The time limit is insane. But worst of all, the car is absolutely uncontrollable. There's no brake button and it's either slow and steady or fast as all hell. The cab's turning circle is also a nightmare, making any movement an absolute project. Oh, and if you want to instantly crash, you can hit the shoulder buttons to do a god-awful handbrake turn or a handbrake reverse. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a handbrake reverse until I played this game. I'm sorry, but... I cannot. It's simply unplayable, which is a shame given that the first two games had a ton going for them. The ball was well and truly dropped. Now, there's only one thing really worth talking about in this game, and um, that is the game Overscreen. Before I show it, I need to remind everybody here, this game was released in 1996 and is set in a New York City of that time period. So, yeah, that 
And uh, that is exactly what you think it is. The only reason I'm mentioning it is because there's, of course, a rather infamous cover for the NES game based on the first film that, in certain lights, could be seen depicting the same major historical event as pointed out by James Rolfe. I, um... I think that's a good point to end before uh, the conspiracy theorists come out and tell us all how Santa Claus is a Martian or something insane. Happy whatever you celebrate, okay? Be well, be safe, be warm. We will see you in 2024. Good night. <laughs>